hey guys um thank you again for watching um this video is gonna just kind of do a run through of uh my whole journey and um i just want to bring awareness to those girls that are or women that are experiencing something with their body if you feel like your body is not right and something is off then you're probably right um don't be like me i possibly i procrastinated a lot um i kind of ignored some of my symptoms um so not sure if you guys have been watching the beginning of my videos um my kids told me to start a youtube channel and i figured i'm like what why you know but then i started thinking like yeah like a lot cancer is everywhere i'm pretty sure that you know at least one person that is close to you that has gone through cancers that has passed away from cancer that has gone through something similar um so back in 2017 um usually now in days the doctors tell you to get a pap smear pap a pap every five years uh, I didn't know that, so I would go every year, but at this time, I was almost a two years that I didn't go to just get, you know, checked, um, as, like, your womanly parts and stuff like that, um, I would get, you know, checkups for, you know, any types of diseases, and nothing was ever wrong, so I never, ever in my life would have thought that I would have gotten cancer. Um, so my symptoms, my personal symptoms were um, basically I, it was like I was on my menstrual period for about three to four months straight. No break at all. Um, I had lots of cramping. Um, during that time when all of that happened, I had given up um, birth control, so I was off of that, so I thought in my head, like, it's my body trying to regulate itself, you know, crazy things that you think you're, you're a doctor, but you're not. Um, so, I went a couple of months without getting checked because I'm like it'll go back to normal it'll go back to normal then I started realizing that I was getting more and more tired of me I'm the type of person that's like always on the go taking my kids I'm a mother of three so I'm up and down going everywhere to the schools work practices um, cooking cleaning you know just things like that so I was not even I I was not even close to having that much energy so what had happened is that um, I went to my first doctor and they said, you're fine. Basically, they did the pap and everything was fine. I was like, okay, maybe I'm just tripping, whatever. I went to the second doctor only because I was at a movie theater and I basically, I felt like I was bleeding to death. So I went to the ER they did an ultrasound with this like stick and they checked my uterus and they checked everything and they said you know you're fine there's nothing there this is probably something that you know women go through and you should you're fine but I'm like I keep telling them I am not fine I went to my third doctor and um this is the third appointment I had made with somebody else and she actually did a biopsy, grabbed a piece, um, sent it to the lab, calls me a week later and says that it's cervical cancer. Before that, though, a week, I was paranoid and I was putting in my symptoms online. And I know that we shouldn't do that. Sometimes it might tell you that you're dying or that you have something incurable. Uh, mine my symptoms that I put in came back as cervical cancer. So when I got that phone call, I was already like freaking out like, oh God, here we go. Uh, yeah, 
she told me I had cervical cancer and that I needed to see an oncologist and I made an appointment with an oncologist through Kaiser and there it just went downhill um yeah sure enough it was it was at the time stage one stage two cancer um they said that it was still fine that I needed to get a hysterectomy I have three kids I figured I wanted one more but I was like for what so I went ahead and did the hysterectomy um at the time the nurse or the doctor had said she was going to do a full hysterectomy and I would have to do get through men go through menopause. Uh, I woke up from the surgery, and I still have my ovaries, so I don't know. If I could have done anything different. If if things would have been different, I don't know. Who knows? So, um, they did more tests, and they said something came back a little positive. We needed to do radiation just to be sure. I did twenty four. Um, days of radiation in February 2018 um, by the end of February I was told that I was cancer free and in my heart and my mind and soul I just didn't feel right I rang this little bell I was by myself and I I don't know something about it didn't feel right but I was like okay thank god let's get through this let's move on with life with three months later, I had a little sharp pain. Keep in mind, the doctor didn't call me to set up any more appointments. She said that I had to be seen three months later. I figured you would see them more frequently to keep, you know, just to keep a close eye on me. But I don't know. Um, I went into the ER. They got a CAT scan. And sure enough, they asked me if I had cancer again. And I... Told them I have had cancer before, and they said, yeah, well, now it's everywhere. Lungs, spine, abdominal walls, and it had spread to my lymph nodes, stage four, and I'm just kind of in shock, and I was like, what is next? I was told they didn't know how long I'd have to live, that I needed to do chemo as my next option. I freaked out about chemo and I'm going to be honest. I was like, I am not going to do chemo whatsoever. I don't care. I'm not going to put that poison in my body. Um, I looked up the alternatives. I didn't know what to do. I was going out of my mind. Uh, finally, I found this immunity therapy center in Tijuana, Mexico, and I went. Uh, I don't know how I got the money. And just one day, I posted my GoFundMe. Next day, I had money, and I was booking a flight to Mexico for, like, a first, second, third, fourth opinion. My cancer was really aggressive, and it's still aggressive. And I stood there for a month, and I truly believed that was the month that I was feeling more energetic. Um, I was eating healthier food. I would let stop eating or drinking or consuming sugar. So I was feeling healthier already but I think since my cancer this is I don't know how it works with other people but I seen all their other results of other patients and they were miracles they were amazing like their tumors were drying up with all these natural remedies and just machines that killed cancer and it was amazing and I was looking at all these people coming out of their cancer free and I'm like I'm gonna be that person but unfortunately I did chemo out there with all the natural stuff and all the machines and um I'm thankful that the doctor was honest with me and like you should go back home and use your insurance and do chemo immediately because your cancer is really aggressive i come back to colorado and i'm just i feel worse from being in mexico it's crazy and um i did bring back supplements from them vitamins b17 c d's everything um started you know doing alkaline water only um, acid because I guess uh, lemon and sour stuff like acid uh, acidy stuff cancer doesn't like heat cancer doesn't like 
So all these things that I learned when I was in Mexico, but here's a, was the issue is that they wanted to try chemo immediately on me because my cancer was spreading and I was just in bad shape. And people ask me like, and as I've ha had mean comments and things like that, like you just wasted your money going to Mexico. I don't think I wasted money. I think I learned a lot and I I did feel better with all the vitamins and the change of lifestyle that got me to healthier eating and alkalining and you know everything was I it was the reason for me. There was a reason why I went there. I came back and um the person that didn't want to do chemo is here I am, July 2018, starting chemo, and I'm freaking out. Chemo is the hardest thing I've ever done in my whole life. If you are a patient and you're doing chemo, I give you so much props because it is the hardest thing you can do. Um, it's I can't explain the feeling. I can't explain how weak and nauseous and the feeling is indescribable and so I did chemo and I'm is at my white blood count was so low that I would always get sick I got the flu I had infections I was always I was in the hospital maybe the eight to ten times last year because of the chemo and when people say, what would you recommend? I would not recommend chemo if you are a person that is always sick, if you can't sit still in a room because chemo will isolate you. You need to isolate yourself and be in a sterile bubble and don't go out in public because if your white blood counts are low and you go out and you risk in putting your life around sick people you instantly get sick and easily die and this is not even an exaggeration it's basically like your body has no defense to fight against any illnesses and that is crazy because i did it my luckily my body and my white blood cells stayed at even 0.3 if it would have dropped more than that, I would have been in ICU and in intensive care. And I, I don't think I would have made it. And honestly, I lost three people last year. Like The cancer didn't kill them. The chemo didn't kill them. It was an infection or the flu or the cold that killed them. And this is why I say if you are one of those persons that is not going to listen to the doctor and get rest or get someone to help you it's going to be hard to do chemo and people ask me how do you stay positive honestly I turned my life over to God at the right time this happened and I don't feel alone I feel like I could turn to God I don't know a lot I get other comments like mean comments about where is your God now and how could God do this to you? God is not doing this to me. And honestly, I think the reason why I'm still here is because of God. So thank God. Thank the Lord for that. Um, and positive. Uh, honestly, I've always been a positive person. Like I could turn a bad situation into a good one. Someone does me wrong. I forgive. And I think I do wear my heart on my sleeve where I just like... I love people, I care for people, I forgive, I don't bring it up, I don't hold grudges, um, so I think that's what's been helping me a lot through this, uh, I have the best of friends, I have a lot of support, family, and I think, honestly, if I didn't have my kids, I would not be pushing to go through this chemo, right now, uh, June 6th will be my 12th round of chemo, of Splatin, of these two other chemos that are hard on your body but I have been trying to take care of myself for so long that I have to sacrifice a lot of things I can't 
do the things that I used to. Um, when my kids are sick right now, I'm sick because my kids were sick. And unfortunately, you know, I have to be a mom and I can't just leave them and not be around them at all. Um, so I'm watching what I, like if I have a fever, I'm immediately go to the hospital. But other than that, <laughs> I'm positive just because I am. Um, I know it's hard for others because other, I feel like your mind is really strong. If you put it in your head that you're sick or that you're going to die or that you feel sad, like it's all mental. I think maybe I thank God because I have a strong mentality and I try to stay positive and I go in there with a good attitude and I'm going to get through this. Chemo is going to be less aggressive. This last chemo, I didn't go in positive and honestly, I was depressed and sad and I was sick for like almost a week and other chemo times I've been in there and I've gone in positive, with positive mind, positive vibes and my chemo was fine. I was like better by the third day. I was walking around, doing all kinds of stuff, eating, you know. So I think it's that has a lot to do with it too. So I just wanted to make this video to just kind of recap of what, what's been going on. Um, so far, total of all treatments, I think I've done 12, 13, 14, 15 chemos. Three of them being immunotherapy, which uh, Keytruda did not work for me. Um, I was compatible with the tumor was compatible for Keytruda, but it actually made my cancer grow more. Um, but back in November 2018, um, with the chemo that I was doing, my cancer went down 70%. That's a miracle in itself, like going from 100 to full to 70% gone, uh, I'll take it and I'll keep doing chemo as long as I can be alive. I don't know. My, my doctor hasn't said I'm going to cure you. He's, that's his goal. But our goal right now is to get into remission. That would be amazing. Um, but I think what they're doing now is just life longevity and, um, keeping me alive for as long as possible. And I think that's what we're doing and I'll take it because miracles happen every day. If I keep doing this, maybe one day, um, I will be cancer free. You never know. Um, but I'm still here and I still get to spend time with my kids and I'm alive. Um, so I thank God for that. And I thank the doctors for, um, uh, being so good to me and watching over me all the time um and it's also because i prayed for it i prayed that god is is the doctors and hopefully one day i will get my my positive miracle results but so far i'm just here because chemo has kept me alive and uh, CBD, um, I live in Colorado, so CBD has helped a lot. Um, I know a lot of people are against it. I know I'm being a mom of three. You don't want to be like the pothead mom. It's not that. It is medical. Um, and it's actually helped with my sleep, my bone pain, um, my nausea, and my sleep. So, and even like anxiousness and even like that feeling um it takes it away and it makes me hungry so and that's really good that you should eat during chemo because if you don't eat you won't be able to have the energy to fight this thing so please 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 comment if you have any questions about the clinic that i went to please anything any comments questions i am here i hope that one day I could touch someone's life and that I could change someone's life and that I can one day speak that I am cured and speak to a lot of you and hopefully 
bring awareness because if your body is saying something, listen to your body. That's the first thing. So, please comment. I will try to answer any questions that I know possible. If not, I will find an answer for you. Um, let me know if you... Anything. Uh, like my video. Thank you guys. And um, we will be seeing each other soon. I will be making more videos because my next chemo is June 6th. And then I get another scan. Um... It'll be good. All right, guys. You have a good rest of your weekend. And enjoy the last day of May. Or is tomorrow the last day? I don't know. Thank you.